The other thing I want to ask you is that um, there's a lot of people like you who are probably experts in their field who've, who have dreamt of like handing their notice in and getting free from prison and all of that, right? Um, but a lot of them are scared, especially when it comes to, you know, finding those first few clients, finding those first few people that actually pay you for some kind of service. So um, in the early days, before you knew anything about marketing and all of that, like how did you get anyone to sign up or anyone to actually pay for something that you were offering? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, I think initially the first thing I did was was the the workshop, you know, um, and and so so I think the first thing because I I was producing something, right? I wasn't asking I wasn't asking for one on one people to come out. I was producing something, and alhamdulillah I did that with Ihsan. You know, I really put effort. I still remember like the packs. I mean, like I look back now and I look at the packs. I don't think it's anything special, but again, maybe back then. And then the nice thing with the Muslim, if you're in the Muslim niche as well, I mean, sometimes like we have a, a reputation or there's a stereotype like, you know, Muslim things aren't done as well as the non-Muslims, you know, professionally, there's this kind of feeling, isn't there? And now, alhamdulillah, now big brands are coming with the help of people like you. Alhamdulillah, now Muslims are leveling up. But, you know, back then I knew that, you know, when I made these little packs and, you know, you, t you go the extra mile, you do, you do things in a professional manner, people take notice and you stand out, right? It's outstanding. You stand out. Um, and so I think because of that, you know, when I did that workshop, delivered those two workshops and people came and they and they really saw the value, they really enjoyed it from that, you know, word spread and people people came to me. I didn't seek any any coaching clients. You know, it was always uh, I didn't even have the intention to do that. You know, people approached me. And, and then, you know, the funny thing is when you, know, when you read about you know, other successful businessmen and, and that's often the case that people who, especially entrepreneurship, people who build a, a good business, often it's because people keep asking them. And I've read it so many times in so many different books that, that, that you know, that, that um, you know, people kept asking me about how did I lose my weight? People kept asking me about, you know, how did I learn this skill? People kept asking me, how do you do this? How, you know, and because they kept asking, you realize, OK, that, that, that's the first kind of market research. That, that's a proof of demand, really, especially when people are coming to you and asking how you did something. So I think, I think that was definitely how I got the first bit of confidence is that doing that first workshop really, really well. Um, and you know, putting my, my my you know whole soul into it, um, delivering it really well. And then after that, you know, people saw that and people would contact me. You know, I remember people you know asking me, could I write for their blog and then this and that. And then also having the confidence. That's on one side. And on the other side, having the confidence to approach people. So you know, the seekers guidance thing, writing for them, even productive Muslim. I approached him. I, I remember seeing him like, oh wow, this is amazing. Look at his cartoons and look, you know, and he was definitely, a, you know, uh, he, he had definitely had this technical expertise, which I didn't. He was really good at the graphics and the cartoons and, you know, he was really good at that side, I could tell. Uh, and with me, mine, my, my strength was live training, live coaching and, you know, my passion and my knowledge. And so I just asked him, I just sent him an email, I said, hey, this is what I do. Would you be, and he was, he was really interested, right? And, and so, and same thing with Seeker's Guidance. With Seeker's Guidance, it, it actually took me a while. I, mean, I actually asked him several times over the last five years. I've tried to collaborate. It's just never worked. And, and you know, I know, I know uh, uh, Sheikh Faraz and people quite well. Personally, he's one of my teachers. Uh, and yet it never worked out. But I didn't stop asking. And, and uh, this last one, the last time I asked, uh, I actually had something to offer. And I think that's one of the other things. You have something to offer. So, you know, every time I asked before, it was like, oh, why don't we do this project? Or whatever. It was always like something which would take a huge amount of collaboration and a huge amount of effort from their end. But when I reflect on it, this time I actually had something. I had my, I was actually asking, should I do a, should we do a workshop together? But he said, you know, your articles, he, I think he noticed my articles, they're pretty good. Why, uh, why don't you write for us? Mm. And it started from that, right? So I think having something, you know, which you can show and showcase and say, look, this is what I've done. You know, so I think those three things. So one, one is like, you know, doing something really well and an initial thing, which, which can get a lot of people in. Two, um, you know, seeking opportunities and, 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 and asking people, um, not, being as, not, not being afraid to ask and, and, and look for opportunities. Because you never know, they might need that, they might need that help. Um, and then thirdly, you know, having something of quality, giving some value, which, which then, then, you know, then showcases your expertise. And so people can think, okay, yeah, that, this person knows what he's doing. Oh, have, have Excellent. So one, one follow-up question uh, from that then is that you mentioned about doing things well, right? And I think that this is very, very important. But I think at the same time, we have this whole notion of uh, doing things quickly. Like there's this <laughs> whole thing about money loves speed and, and working very fast and not procrastinating or not being in the perfectionist kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. So what kind of advice do you have between those two things, like actually producing something that's outstanding, but yeah. at the same time, like not spending four years <laughs> PowerPoint production that you're then going to do another three years practice on. That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think where, where the um, 
that you get if someone is um, procrastinating on starting. Right? I think there's a great distinction here. So I've met a lot of people, you know, who, you know, they want they're, they're thinking of like I think it's it's that first stage of like jumping ship or or starting a new project mm. or starting to write or you know taking on some coaching or you know it's it's it's, it's new it's something new, right? And they often procrastinate for well years and they never get around to doing it because it's, it's a fear of the unknown, the fear of starting. So I think in that situation, no doubt, that's what speed is helpful. There, just get started. Don't worry about the quality. Take that first step, and you're definitely going to learn and accelerate when you go as you go along. I think the the more experienced you get, right, that's when you can take you you get better at judging it. That's when you can really focus on quality. And, and and then you know when you when you become you know when you start having you know you know you've got thirty people coming to a workshop you know that something's booked and people are coming and they're going to pay for it it's already set up you know it's going to happen right you become so busy anyway that naturally you 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 don't have time to spend too much time on it right but at the same time the time you have you want to make sure it's as excellent as possible so I think I think I think kind of almost sorts itself out and and you learn to get that balance and 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 you know and and you're right it is a fine balance between you know you want to do a good job but you you also want to get it out there so a good example is a weekly article right you only have a week to do it so you've got a deadline mm. so it forces you to like you've got you've got you've got to make sure it's out there um and and I, and I must admit sometimes I you know the, and I'm an English teacher I'm a proofreader by a background as well you know I'm I'm, I'm famous for, they, they call me um, chief you know I, I used to joke with my parents I'm superintendent. Uh, of the grammar police in the UK, right? And some people take that literally. I'm like, no, 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 it's, maybe it's a joke, right? You know, so I'm quite a stickler and all that. But even I will make typos, right? Because of the, the the deadline, right? But I mean, does it matter? The odd typo here and there, just one, maybe one or two readers notice it. They'll they'll let you know. Thousands didn't, right? Hundreds didn't. And so, you know, as long as you're getting it, as long as the, the, the article is good quality, as long as you've proofread it, right, you know, the, 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 you know the, the, there's a certain minimum standard. You make sure you do that. You make sure you proofread it once. You make sure it's well researched. You make sure it's a good quality article. And then, you, now that's different to a book. So a book, you've got time there. Now a book, you, when, when that's out in the market, that's on print, you've got to take more pains and you have to uh, make sure there's a higher standard of, of, you know, you shouldn't let typos in that because that's going to be something published out, you know, out to, uh, you know, in, in a book format. So that de- that deserves more uh, time and higher quality than something which is going out every week and people are going to forget straight away okay. and etc. Yeah, yeah I'm sure I love that. So we're basically saying that if you are new, um, then take action, take lots of action, take it fast, don't be slow, like do it, right? Um, and as you get more experience, then you can kind of, uh, you know, do things of decent quality. You can still do things at decent quality, judge things the way they kind of uh, need to be done. So like you said, something like a book, you can actually take uh, lots of time with and do it really deeply and properly because, you know, this is going to be the big thing for you. But like we know, with content, it should be something that you just produce, 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 produce. Mm. Uh, and then hopefully one of those will be a super hit and then you just carry on with that. So I think that's really, really good kind of uh, advice in terms of the balance between uh, perfectionism and procrastination and stuff. So that's great. 